So I want to look at how MBIs can be used to align teams and lower the cost of coordination. And uh, this is a very powerful insight that you can do this. And it, it doesn't really take a lot. The lessons to be learned is we got to remember we're going after consumption of value, not building features, that we want to create alignment across teams, that it's outcome, not output. We're not just putting things out there. We're trying to make it so it's a change to our customers. So the question is, what does it take to increase alignment? What do we have to do? Well, we have to have a common purpose. A team is about is if, if, if you don't have a common purpose, you don't really have a team. They've, they could have different skills and they could work different ways, but they have to have a common purpose. They have to have respect for each other. They have to have trust for each other. Um, and to create alignment across teams, you must find the common objective. It's not the intersection of individual teams focus. This, by the way, is the same thing with individuals on teams. Uh, there is a relationship between individuals on a team and teams made up of multiple teams, but the dynamics are a little bit different. You have to be careful about that. And when you have a team of teams, you, you've got to look to see what our vision is, is creating value, releasable value, consumable value. Whereas in an individual team, there's a lot more freedom for the individuals to work together. Okay, there's a bigger picture you have to pay attention to. So you've all heard the parable of the bricklayers. You know, I'm laying bricks, I'm building a wall, I'm building a church. I've always added this fourth one to myself. I'm, I'm creating a place where people can connect with God. You know, even a church is, a, is a, a, a means to an end. You don't just build churches to have a nice, beautiful structure. You're trying to do this, connect, get your own. And in fact, some churches are different. Some churches are about how, you know, you can follow the, the rules of the church and, and, and pray to God that way. Some churches are more spiritual, like, you know, how do I just connect, connect it to my spiritual nature? So in, in Agile, and I'm not trying to be, I'm not trying to be, uh, you know, disrespectful, but it's kind of the same thing. You know, there's like, I'm implementing a story, I'm creating a feature, I'm working on a release, or I'm adding values to the stakeholder. This is really what we're trying to do. We want to align around this. We don't want people building walls that are just pieces without a common vision. This, by the way, and I've referred to this book a lot, is the timeless way of building is how do you design? How do you look at things holistically by Chris Alexander? It's one of my three top books. If you're to read three books, Timeless Way of Building, The Choice by Ellie Goldrack, because I talk about that a lot. So Timeless Way of Building is how do you look at the whole and decompose things into related parts. Uh, the choice is basically how do you do critical thinking uh, and how do you solve problems and what people need to feel comfortable in going out into new things. And the third one is The Obstacle is the Way, which is a book on stoicism. But it's basically how do you, when you have a problem, instead of trying to work around the problem, take the problem itself and use that as the strength. So if people aren't aligned, it's not a question of how do you coordinate them? See, that's just, well, they're not aligned. But look at what's not what's causing the not alignment and fixing it. So teams doing their own thing, that's what you happen. If you give features and stories, they're gonna build it in what's more easy for them. And that makes sense. We, tell, we say people are autonomous, they're self-managing. So what you have now though, is they'll not consider integration costs. Well, that's not me right now. I'm trying to get, I'm gonna, I like, my team likes to take the easy stuff. Another team might like to take the tougher stuff. The problem is, the problem is you're not looking, what does it need across the teams? What will enable, instead of having a feature be partially done by one team and then not fully implemented until another team happens, that doesn't, that's not good. Then there's a lot of time between start and finish. This is one of the things we'll talk about when I get to uh, uh, value planning, as we call it. In SAFE, they call it big room planning. But how do you focus on planning MBIs? See, I didn't even talk about this with the MBIs, but minimum business increments can be used to get MBIs out sooner, not just try to get everything done in the planning event or in a sprint. This could be considered like, how do I use flow of releases and things of that nature? Okay. Uh, it's, it's this with MBIs, you wanna look at the MBI and see how to build it. This creates waste. In other words, if you take a feature and you start and do a little bits, but it time starts and stops, it's gonna cause problems. The same thing with MBIs, it'll, it'll start and stop and it'll cause problems. That creates waste. So basically in the same way a laser pointer conducts guides cats together, MBIs creates this focus 
everybody's focusing on how do I get this MBI done? Or how do I get this feature done? How do I get something done and delivered quickly? Not how do I do my thing? It's a focus across the teams. And this is very important. Okay, so this is an interesting observation from Steve Bungay, The Art of Action. By the way, in the Amplio Community Practice Resources, there is a link to The Art of Action Summary. It's a great book. I actually recommend getting the book and reading it. But Jim Trott years ago did a synopsis of it. Uh, it's like 12 pages to read. He did a really great job. Uh, in fact, when we started wanting to uh, use it more, Jim felt, well, we really ought to ask Stephen about this. So he sent him a copy and there was only one place we just kind of disagreed with him and we wanted to check that out. And it was great. This, uh, Jim did such a good job. Stephen said, yeah, that part, he was a little flaky on himself and he was gonna change it. So Steve, Jim had, had anticipated that. So there's a, like I said, a PDF you can get. But one of the things he brings up is the more alignment, the more autonomy. So how is up to the teams, but the alignment is this MBI in a sense. This is how this works. Teams doing their own thing. You give MBIs, they see the what and the why and you, they can figure out the how. You know, that's, uh, that's their, their job. This is how you do this. This is why coming from the teams up doesn't always work because you need this higher view. With an understanding how delays cause waste, they'll naturally align with other teams because they'll know if they don't, they're gonna cause a lot of problems. Not just problems for the other teams, but for themselves. So this is useful to see. Basically, as alignment goes up, coordination costs go down. Okay, that's important. The less alignment you have, the more coordination is required. That's why I say coordination is a symptom of insufficient alignment, not that you don't need any coordination. Okay, the focus has to shift from the team's goals to the organization's goal. Now, this is not a management top-down. This is a value stream from front to end. This is the difference. I don't see this being done much in the Agile space. Okay, so as a review, we need both autonomous and aligned teams. Alignments created by common vision, not trying to combine the individual teams. It's not a top-down view. It's a holistic perspective of how people in the company relate to their stakeholders.